through the wild predator with myself, Clinton Jarman. Uh, thanks for joining me once again <coughs> on this fine Friday afternoon. Um, just before I get into things, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to uh, leave a comment below. Uh, let me know what you guys think of this uh, fan channel that I'm trying to create for South African sports. And also guys, don't forget to subscribe here on the YouTube channel as well as our online magazine, thefairdigest.com. Um, so straight into things then, um, this week I, I wanted to do a bit, um, sort of just a roundup of, of, of sort of sport in general in, in South Africa, but I feel that the current situation with CSA is very difficult to ignore. Um, so we will <clears throat> we'll talk a bit of sevens later, but let's just dive straight into the, 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 the circus that is currently the CSA. So no, the, the, the director of cricket appointment is no closer than it was last week. Although talks are still ongoing with Graham Smith, um, my feeling is that they're going to give him the role uh, pretty soon to try and uh, save face for what's gone on over the last sort of you know few weeks. Um, so you know just to just to break it down for you guys, um, some journalists were the accreditations were revoked. Um, yeah, because. Well, I don't know why, because they they weren't they didn't really give a reason, and you know the 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 accreditations were given back uh, re or given back twenty four hours later. So just goes to show that you know there obviously wasn't a reason for it. Uh, the, the journalists that had their accreditations revoked were Stuart Hess, uh, Ken Borland, Neil Manthorpe, Talford Weiss, and Fidoz <coughs> Muna Munda. So yeah, um, you know, I think you know CSA is trying to, uh, well, the heads of CSA is trying to hide the truth really, and, and these journalists are guys that are in the know and guys that have sources and stuff like that. And I think, uh, you know, last week I, I, I came to you guys and I said, you know, they want to have a selection panel, but they don't want to let us know who it is because the media sensationalism and what blah, and blah 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 whatever. Um, so I, I I don't know what to say about that. That's you know just points to a bit of incompetence really at the top that you've revoked someone's accreditation to to, to uh, you know to get things out to the to the public and you know we trust these journalists to do that now they can't and then 24 hours later they get given their, their rights back so um, yeah I don't know what's going on there but yeah uh, thank goodness they, they got the accreditations back and have been reporting the stories as they, they come in. Um, then there were some resignations. Uh, Iqbal Khan resigned this week. Uh, I think it was Wednesday. Um, Iqbal Khan, you know, listing a few issues there, uh, mainly with the CEO, uh, CEO of CSA, Tabang Moreau. Um, in the list was credit card abuse in the office, um, the, obviously the accreditation debacle, um, and handling of the players' union. Um, he felt that, you know, the CEO in his actions or non-actions is, is ruining the game, in his own words there. So, it's very sad to see from within the organization that stuff like this is happening. And then Shirley Zinn also resigned this week. Um, she was on the board of directors as well. So, um, very little confidence in Tabang Moreau at this, at this point. Um, but it goes it goes further, guys. Uh, the South African Cricket Asso Cricketers Association are considering strike action against uh, CSA if things don't turn around. Uh, this could have um, big implications on the current Nzanzi Super League. This could have massive implications on the Test uh, Championship, the Test Series coming up for us against England in the Test Championship. Um, and I hope that you know that some agreement can can be made and 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 that the Players Association can get um, what they need out of, out of CSA. Um, but, you know, like I say, guys, this story just, just continues, to, um, continues to grow. Um, then there were some, some high-level suspensions. Uh, Zianda <coughs> Nkuta uh, was suspended. She was the, was the CFO um, who... Yeah, who oversaw a 650 million um, rand loss and then came out and said that uh, CSA is not in a financial crisis. Um, how do you lose 
nearly half a billion rand and you're not in financial crisis. I just don't understand it. And, you know, the, the fact that she's been suspended doesn't surprise me at all. So this just speaks to all, speaks to the sort of haphazard way that cricket has been run in South Africa. Um, and then uh, quite a while back we heard that Corey Van Sale, Clive X team and uh, uh, Na Nasai Apia were suspended um, because of the things involving the Mzanzi Super League and players not being paid or something like that, um, something to that effect. Um, and money's missing or whatever. I don't know the full story because the full story hasn't been given. They've been suspended, but no one knows why. There's speculation, a lot of speculation, as to why they've been suspended, but no one actually knows what is going on with inside the inner workings of Cricket South Africa. And this is extremely worrying as a, as a fan of the Proteus. Um, and then the biggest one for me is Standard Bank pulling out as head sponsor. Now, this is massive and it has massive implications for uh, cricket in South Africa. Um, you know, I've, I've been looking at guys' Twitter pages and stuff like that. Stuart Hess uh, tweeted that a guy in the provincial, um, a provincial official told Hess, Stuart Hess, that, um, you know, if Standard Bank does officially pull out, that... CSA will find it extremely difficult to keep the lights on, which is massive for, for cricket in South Africa. It doesn't just affect, you know, the CEOs and the guys um, <clears throat> making all the money. It affects uh, coaches, players, ground staff, admin staff for all the grounds and, and the different associations and stuff like that. Co uh, co I said coaches as well. It um, affects development of the game. It affects so much, so many more areas than just you know, the guys at the top. So, but they, you know, Standard Bank um, have a, a reputation to uphold and I can understand exactly why they're pulling out. I do think maybe they've pulled the trigger a bit early, you know, because CEO Tabang Moreau has actually now been suspended by CSA. And I, I, honestly, I don't think he will be back. So, <clears throat> um, we'll have to wait and see if maybe um, Standard Bank can maybe do a U-turn there on, on, on their pull-up. But um, at this point, Things are not looking very good for, for South African cricket. Um, I just, you know, on the, I don't know how um, these executives expect the guys to perform on the field when the, there is an absolute, excuse my language, shit show going on behind the scenes. Because how you, you don't even know who your, your director of cricket is. You don't have a... a, a a long-term plan for a coach, your CEO is all over the place, um, there's resignations left, right and centre, there's people getting suspended left, right and centre, it's just an absolute dog show at the moment and I can't, um, I can't stand here in front of you guys as a fan and, and, and say that you know everything is going to be okay and you know I spoke about a long-term plan for the team but what's the long-term what's the long-term plan for the infrastructure and what's the long-term plan for you know, uh, rebuilding our, our franchise system and rebuilding and, and getting those players good enough so that they can compete um, at the level we need them to. So, yeah, um, just sad to see you guys. I, I'm really just, I just, it just saddens me that we've fallen and it's taken, it hasn't taken really that long. It's taken sort of eight months, two years, 18 months to two years to, to fall this far. Um, you know, the only thing that I hope is that, you know, maybe Moreau going, although it seems like he's a small cog in, in a, what is a large problem in, in cricket South Africa. I just hope that, um, you know, the right guys can step forward and do the job. Um, so Kevin Peterson, you know, remember Kevin Peterson, KP, he obviously left our shores to go, you know, better his, himself and play for, for England and, you know, all credit to him. Uh, but he's weighed in on the situation and uh, he says he can fix South African cricket, um, uh, you know, and the suggestions he's made, he, I don't think he's that far off base. He's, so he suggested that CEO of CSA should be uh, Jacques Foll, uh, who's current CEO of the Titans now. The Titans are one of the best uh, run cricketing organizations in the country. Um, they have success on and off the field. Um, 
and they always seem to be run correctly. They always seem to have youngsters coming through uh, the systems and, and they always seem to have their wits about them with regards to appointing coaches and you know when the guy steps aside or, or goes to a new role, there's always someone in place. So, you know, I think that's credit to Jacques and I think perhaps give him the role at CEO of, of uh, Cricket of South Africa and, you know, see if he can steer the ship in the right direction. Then obviously he wants Graham Smith as, as the director of cricket. I think this is a unanimous choice around the board. And I, look, I do think Graham will get the job and I think he will be a fantastic uh, servant as he has been for the country. Like I said um, in an article I wrote this, this week, Graham has served the country as, as, a, as a captain for a long, long time and I think he's the best man for the job as, as director of cricket. I know he hasn't been behind the scenes, but as a captain, you kind of have to be behind the scenes and in front of the, uh, on the field um, because you kind of privy to um, a lot of information off the field that most players aren't. So I think Graham will be perfect for the role and I, I wish him well if he gets it. Um, and then team manager, he'd like to see, this is KP now, he'd like to see uh, Mark Boucher as the team manager. Now, I, I can't really argue with that, although, you know, I would prefer uh, a guy like Ashwell Prince. I just think he's the right man for a rebuild. Um, I think, you know, Mark inherited quite a good side there at, at the Titans. It, although they were underperforming, he's got them to that next level. Um, but I do think, I, personally, I would have Ashwell Prince. Uh, so that's the only place myself and KP uh, differ. Um, and then the spin coach, he's got Robin Peterson. You can't really go wrong there. Robbie P, one of our better um, spinners over the years. Uh, bowling coach, Makai Antini. Um, yeah, Makai, you know, um, having watched him now with the pantry and, and, and that sort of thing, um, you know, English isn't his mother tongue, so I don't think he always um, comes across... He sort of comes across as a bit of a joker, but if you actually listen to what he's saying, he makes a lot of sense when he when he when he talks Makai and Tini. And I really, when he's when I'm watching um, talk shows on TV or when he's doing punditry for games and stuff like that, I really listen to what he's saying because he, he makes a lot of sense and he loves the game. And I think he'd be be, be perfect as a bowling coach. And then as a consultant, he would like Jock Callis. Now you can't really go wrong with probably the greatest all rounder that's ever played the game. It's arguable, but the greatest South African player ever to play the game. That's definitely, I mean, you know, Jacques, he's been around multiple systems now. He's played, obviously, IPL. He's played in um, many, many years for, for, for South Africa. And I think he'd be a great consultant, you know. He can help out with whatever we need, basically. So, um, yeah, KP, you're not, you're not far wrong there, Paul. I think, you know, it's, it's a... It's a Tough situation that South Africa's in, but they need guys to now step up and, and make the next take that next step. Uh, you know, guys like Mark uh, Boucher uh, or Ashwell Prince or Jacques Graham Smith, um, Jacques Falls even to 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 step in and, and you know help steady uh, the ship. Because if we all just stand back and, and watch it implode, um, you know our cricket's going to be in dire straits very very soon. Um, so yeah, guys, enough. Enough, uh, enough negativity for one Friday. I'll let you guys go go have a beer very soon. Trust me, um, I'm gonna definitely get in on that action as well. Uh, after all this week, it's been a hectic week with regards to the cricket. Uh, some of the things that come out have just absolutely floored me. But yeah, so let's just move on to some more, something a bit more positive. So the Blitz Booker started extremely well this weekend. Um, the Sevens has a new format now, they're starting on a Thursday. Uh, I think it used to be the old format, if I'm not uh, mistaken. So they started extremely well, they beat Kenya 17-12. Uh, um, you know, we were actually behind in this one early on, but you, you can never count us out with our defence and we multiple playmakers on the, on the field. Um, they followed that up with a 35-5 thrashing of uh, Spain. Um, no real problems there for the Blitzbocker. Then the Blitzbocker took on a spirited England side. Um, that was, yeah, that was a really good game. I think the ref made a couple of not dodgy calls, but the calls that went South Africa's way that I think might not have, you know, on an, on another day. So maybe a bit lucky to get the win here. Uh, but we won nineteen fourteen in the end, and we topped our group 
We will now go through to the cup quarter final where we will face Argentina. Very much a surprise in their group, uh, finishing second above Fiji, who missed out for the first time ever in Dubai. That is outstanding. Um, so yeah, so things looking good for the Blitzbocker. They started really well. Um, they've won, I think, four of the last five years in Dubai. So heavy favourites there, I think. Um, to pull it out the bag again now with Fiji also uh, not making it through to the quarters. Um, so yeah, South Africa, we finished, I mean, the Bliss Booker yeah, finished fourth last season. Um, by all accounts, it was an inconsistent season for them. Uh, they'll be hoping to do a lot better this season. Obviously, the World Series, uh, you know, we've won it three times already. We're looking to make it a fourth. Um, also, it'll be a... Um, Obviously, 2020 being an, an Olympic year, it is an Olympic sport. So they'll be looking to um, bring home the, the gold medal there as well, guys. Um, so yeah, that is all I have for you today. Um, yeah, guys, just a little quick thought. Um, I'm trying to start a South African sports fan channel. So anything involving South African sport, whether it be rugby, soccer, cricket, uh, netball, whatever. I try and cover it all. Obviously, um, you know, sometimes it's, it's a bit too much to cover, uh, but I'd love to, to hear from you guys. So get commenting below what you think of the fan channel, what you think of, you know, um, the cricket situation, what do you think of the Blitzbocker's positive start? Um, multiple things to discuss, and I'd love to discuss it with you guys. So get commenting. Don't forget to like this video, guys. Don't forget to subscribe both here on the YouTube channel, The Fair Digest. Um, as well as thefairdigest.com. I have written an article this week. Um, it is also on the, the current si cricket situation, and I've actually offered some solutions there in that article. Uh, so you're welcome to go check it out, thefairdigest.com. Go check my articles out, guys. Uh, thanks for joining me once again. Have a lacquer weekend, um, and stay safe out there, guys. Cheers.